With the new year underway, we're all looking forward to the games of 2014, the experiences that are going to define our gaming years when they actually come out. But some of the games that are going to make waves in 2014 are actually playable right now through Steam Early Access, a program that lets you buy and play games while they're still in development. There are a lot of Early Access games currently available, with more coming every week, and while some are totally playable and fun, others are still pretty rough. So, today and every day this week, I'll be your host as we take a look at a bunch of Steam Early Access games to give you an idea of what's worth playing, what's worth waiting for, and what all's going on in this brave new world of giving people money to play their games before their games are actually done. Today's crop of games all believe that the world is a dangerous place with secrets worth pursuing at any cost. Maxwell McGee spent some time delving into Dungeons of the Endless and came back with a weird penchant for geometric shapes. Let's find out why. Dungeon of the Endless may wear the guise of a roguelike, but at its heart it's a tower defense game. In brief, you control the last two survivors of a crashed spaceship and must protect the ship's core from waves of enemies while simultaneously exploring the many rooms of a subterranean dungeon. Each one of these rooms is blocked off by a door. Opening a door earns you resources to upgrade your characters and build defenses, but it could also trigger enemies to pop out and attack you. Sometimes these enemies appear in the room you just entered, and sometimes they appear in a room you visited three doors back. By playing smart and carefully choosing which doors to open, you can funnel enemies down a single path and into your turrets. Eventually, you will find a room containing the exit, which leads to the next floor of the dungeon. This is an exciting moment in the game since it means you must go back to your ship, grab the power core, and slowly carry it to the exit. Oh, and while you're doing this, the enemies will endlessly pop up around you, and your turrets will start shutting down, and they're not going to stop, so you really need to hurry. Grim Dawn. Does the title refer to sunrise in a war-torn kingdom? An encounter with a stern mafioso? or the morning after a hard night out. Kevin Van Ort has your answer, but spoilers, <laughs> it's the first one. Click happy top-down action, check. Deep dark dungeons, check. Spells and swords and side quests, check, check, and check. You've played games like this before, and Grim Dawn isn't steamrolling tradition with a groundbreaking new action role-playing game. In fact, Grim Dawn is so tied to tradition that I wish it looked further beyond the typical Diablo clone tropes and establish an identity of its own. Yet, with the tried and true design comes the kind of absorbing looting and leveling that keeps you gazing at the screen for hours at a time. $29.99 gets you at least 10 hours of solid single-player exploration, all of them brought to you by the lead gameplay designer of Titan Quest, and those are 10 refined, well-structured hours. For a work in progress, Grim Dawn certainly feels complete, with few of the interface quirks and glitches that characterize unfinished software. In time, more acts, cooperative options, and other content will build upon this solid foundation with dual-class leveling, competing factions, and lots of nooks and crannies to investigate, Grim Dawn seems a no-brainer, given the developer's proven pedigree and the stability and elegance of the game in its current form. To close out today's trio, I've got a personal favorite to share with you, and yes, it's yet another one of those games where you can mutate your butt to make yourself more powerful. What can I say? I've got predictable tastes. Have a look-see at Nuclear Throne. Of all the grim and fantastical apocalyptic worlds video games have brought into our lives, none is quite like Nuclear Throne. In this unforgiving shoot 'em or beat 'em up action game, you pick a weird mutant and then try to blast your way past a host of weird mutants in order to sit upon the nuclear throne and proclaim yourself king of the weird mutants. There's a fish that can dodge roll, a robot that eats guns and poops ammo, a speedy carnivorous plant, and a thing named eyes with a ton of eyes. 
Each character has a passive trait and an active ability that you need to exploit to survive, and as you level up, you gain new mutations that can heavily influence your playstyle. You gotta watch your ammo, choose your weapons wisely, bob and weave, and for heaven's sake, don't die, because this is a roguelike and I'll lose everything- No! Crap! Aw, oh, damn it. Nuts! Though more levels, more characters, more secret worlds, and other stuff are coming before launch, it feels like the core action of Nuclear Throne is fairly complete. It's fast-paced and brutal, but it's kept me coming back for more than a few hours now, thinking I'll do better this time. I usually don't, but with slow-motion powers and a deadly blade, I'm gonna make those mutant scum remember the blindfolded chicken ninja named Chicken. That's it for today, but tomorrow and every day this week we'll be rustling up a bunch of Steam Early Access games for your benolgement and enjoyitude. Let us know what you thought of today's games in the comments below, and we'll see you tomorrow.